Fatima, uh, thank you so much for joining us, uh, Vilatina, for this interview. Um, first, I would love to get some context and just ask you why you're here. I am here to um, raise awareness of what's happening with my daughter with her sexual harassment case in the Air Force. Your daughter, Sarah, uh, made some allegations and uh, on a post on Instagram. So have you spoken to her since then? Unfortunately, she is not able to say what's going to be happening because now they're involving the OSI, which is like the FBI for the Air Force. And I'm assuming because the chief master sergeant is getting involved in her case. So that's why she can't do any media interviews. Right, so um, just for a little bit more context, uh, Sarah was going to do a live interview with us um, on Instagram, but she wasn't able to because she was prohibited an hour ago. Uh, how is she doing right now? Um, she's very agitated. We just want this to be over with. The day of the of the interview that she was going to say, the same day in the morning here for me in Japan at night, she went to grab something to eat and she had to see this guy again. So that really ignited what we were trying to, for her to become. It just started all over again. How long has your daughter been complaining and reporting this? This started since January. Since January, she has been documenting. She has been reporting to every single supervisor that she's, she's going through the chain of command. She has submitted um, complaints. She has expressed so many times that she felt comfortable with this person. Um, after a while and um, uh, me getting involved in contacting as well their supervisor, they opened the case. They, um, they decided that they were going to do a no contact order for this person, but obviously that's not even important for him. No contact means it's basically for us, it's a restraining order against him. Um, that was never respected. Um, this individual kept on working with her alongside. He kept on doing exercise with her, literally running like five to 10 feet next to him, making sure that Sarah knew that he was right there. He would park, he would just be around her. He would even have the audacity of even saying hi to Sarah since they work in the same station. Um, they have moved Sarah twice, but that's the only solution that I have seen. They have they think that that would be the solution, but moving is not the solution. She keep on um, basically being there when Sarah is there, even though he knows that he shouldn't be next to her or shouldn't be shouldn't allow her to see him. Uh, obviously, he's not taking this serious. Um, I, I cannot even think why would somebody not take this serious being in the Air Force and knowing the consequences for that order to be actively and for him to feel so comfortable to keep on doing it and doing it and doing it and nothing is done to him? Why, what, what are they waiting for? I, it's hard for me to understand. And this is why I always ask the supervisors, why is it that we allowing this? Why is it that she have to work with this person? Why is it that for her to get her supplies to be able to work as an engineer, and this is what she was hired for, to do her job, she has to go get the supplies. Why does she have to be around this person? Why isn't this person transferred somewhere else? So now I'm requesting for her to be transferred. Um, we submitted, uh, a, she submitted a uh, document for the equal opportunity and they denied it because it was not an assault. You literally need to be assaulted for you to for this thing to be approved. Sexual harassment is not a reason for you to be moved from a base, which to me it's 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 incredible. Like you have to wait for you to be assaulted for somebody to move. I just can't I can't I can't deal with this anymore. My conversations with Sarah on a daily basis is Sarah, be careful, look your surroundings, uh, make sure if something happens, you fight to the end. That's are the conversations that I have with my daughter every day. Every day she goes to the store, I'm on the phone. We take turn with a family to make sure she's safe. Um, the day that she was gonna interview with you, literally an hour before the interview, she received a call that she couldn't do this because it was under a higher rank investigation like the OSI. 
and the chief called me, texted me and told me the same thing as well as Sarah needed to reach out to make sure that it was okay for her to be interviewing the media. Has the situation gotten worse since she reported? Ever since she submitted this report, she has been retaliated against with, with her uh, co-workers. They were just being isolated. I, they have been isolating her, not including her in anything. Uh, Sarah has been depressed all this time. It's been a year long struggling with this situation and nobody seems to care. She has voiced her, her, she has voiced her, 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 um, her opinions to so many people and they don't seem to understand that it's not okay for somebody. Uh, this kid went inside Sarah's room and started touching her underwears, her bra, and he was making indecent comments, sexual indecent comments. He was talking about toys. He came, even in the workplace, he was making all these disgusting comments to Sarah and everybody heard it and, and it was just like nothing. I don't understand. Why is Has this being allowed? Yeah, I, I understand. I And I understand this must be really hard for you too because she's so far from home. Has she been able to talk to a lawyer? And if so, what have they told her? Uh, the, the the problem with the Air Force is that everything has to be through through the chain of command. She has to go to the um, the supervisor, then the first, chan uh, first commander, then it's uh, the shirt. I don't, there's so many ranks that she have to go before anything is ever done, which she has followed all of the, she has followed all the protocols. She has done every little thing for her voice to be heard. And still, they don't seem to understand that it's not okay for her to have this person next to her. Are you, are you afraid for your daughter's safety? I am, very much we are. We can't even sleep. Like I said, we have to be on the phone. If she doesn't answer my text, I start getting paranoid. Um, I start calling. I have called her supervisor many times. Uh, the only thing that uh, the first commander, the first acting commander, he told me that um, the base was too, that's what they told me, the base is too small. What is that saying? That it's inedible for her to, um, to be seen with this person. How this makes it okay for the base to be, so my thing is like, how do, what, is, what a coincidence is it that every time she goes out, he's there. How is this possible? It can be a coincidence. How? It's different times. It's different time and this, we can't take this anymore. We need help. She needs help. She needs to get out of there. That's the only thing we're asking to move her away from there. And so far, do you know what other what her other female colleagues um, have said about the situation? Have they uh, voiced their opinion at all? Uh, Sarah has been dealing with this by herself and with us. Um, like I said, her uh, for some reason I don't know why even females have been siding with this person. I don't understand why they think that this is okay. Um, it shouldn't. It shouldn't. This shouldn't have been allowed all this time. It's been since January and it's still, and it's getting it for him to feel so comfortable to just keep on doing the same thing all over after having an order. It's just incredibly wrong. And are there any other victims out there that are too scared to speak? I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are, but they're too scared for the same reason, most likely for the same reason where they needed to be assaulted, even if they're assaulted. How is it that this is the only reason why she can be transferred out? She needs to be assaulted? How does that make that okay? So Fatima, we open up this space for you to speak directly to the US Armed Forces and Superiors right now. What would you say to them? What would you like to tell us? I would like for them to help my daughter relocate, to help to, to fix those laws, to make sure that sexual harassment is taken serious in any single base for all the airmen to feel comfortable and everybody in the military to feel comfortable to voice their opinion. Don't be scared to, to report sexual harassment. Don't feel like they're not gonna do anything. Obviously, sadly, we have to come to the media for this to take action and for somebody to move or do something. This shouldn't be the reason why we come to the media. This shouldn't be. They need to be able to feel 
comfortable that they're going to have somebody protecting them and somebody that's going to be with them all this time. It, it, it can be like that, that they're signing their life to go to war or to defend the country and why this is not happening today. Why can they feel protected with their own, you're following all the protocol, you're following everything that they implemented for you to follow for these cases and nothing is being done but no contact and the, no contact is being is being broken and still this person is still there this Saturday she just saw him why is it that he if he saw Sarah's car he sees Sarah somewhere there why can he turn the other way why can you avoid that obviously he's not scared or they haven't told him something that could scare the crap out of him why do he feel comfortable that just come and saying hi to Sarah who 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 are you that's what I want to know now. Who the hell are you? That you feel like you cannot be touched. No, this is wrong. And I'm tired of that. And I'm tired of crying. I am tired of crying. No more. I need action. I don't want another email. Ma'am, we're working on this. Because this is what I'm getting. Ma'am, you're working on it. They're working on it. I am sick and tired of these emails. I want actions. Enough. You have since January. We're almost at the end of the year. What, how much time do you need? How much time do you need? For my daughter to be missing? For us to come to the media so you can take attention so you guys can start moving? Are you serious? No, I'm just fed up. I can't anymore. We can't continue living like this. I cannot continue. We can't, Sarah cannot. I just need my daughter to get out of there. Thank you so much, Fatima, for coming here and sharing uh, Sarah's story and Sarah's allegations and her Instagram posts and everything that has been happening with her case. Uh, we will be uh, following this case and following many other cases that are still in, up in the air and all eyes are watching. So I really appreciate your time coming here and, and speaking out about it. Thank you so much for your time as well.